Welcome, everybody. If you are here viewing this, you are the parents of an Oklahoma Road middle school student, and Liberty High School looks forward to the class of 2028. Joining me this evening is Miss Caitlin Robinson, school counselor here at Liberty High School, and my name is Mr. Putt. Miss Robinson and I spent today at Oklahoma Road presenting to eighth grade classes. We had a wonderful time. Miss Robinson, how were your classes? They were excellent. They had great questions, and I look forward to seeing them at Liberty next year. And I would agree. Our My set of classes were very attentive, also had some good questions. So we're going to go ahead and give our parents the same presentation because we know as educators that when a student comes home and a parent asks, how was your day? What did you do? What did you learn? Oftentimes the answer is, hmm. So we want the parents to hear exactly what the students heard today. We started the presentation just kind of discussing the differences between uh, middle school and high school and a lot of our uh, students had great answers they were very in tune with the fact that you know middle school very different high school is going to be a different experience we talked about how there could be for example an art class could be sitting next to a 10th or an 11th grader so there's mixed grade levels in some of the classes mixed grades in the lunches the fact that we need to begin concentrating on graduation requirements and earning credits towards our graduation requirements. The fact that we can get involved here at Liberty High School in all of the activities that we have, that we seek to treat our students like young adults, and we expect them to be young, independent learners, self-advocating for themselves. We talked about choosing their own classes, and obviously that's why we were in schools today. We want them to know who we are, so we had a quick rundown on our principal, who is Mr. Gantz, joining us probably for, I believe it's the 10th or 11th year. We have two assistant principals broken down by alphabet, beginning of the alphabet, A through K, last names A through K, Mr. Merson, and then the end of the alphabet, L through Z, is Mrs. Brown. There are four school counselors at Liberty High School. The beginning of the alphabet, last names A through D, Mrs. Moses, last names E through K, Mrs. Hewitt, I'm Mr. Putt, L through Q, and then again, my colleague, Ms. Robinson, who did some presenting uh, today and is with us this evening, R through Z. So we started off wanting to make sure that our students are well aware of graduation requirements. Students are aware that they need to have four credits of English, starting with English 9. Beyond that, once we get through English 9, our options do open up through the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade to include some of our students will take a dual enrollment Carroll Community College English 101 to meet their English requirements in the senior year. So lots of options for our students as they progress through uh, their four years with us. For social studies, we do require three credits, the government, U.S. history, and world history. That does mean that in the 12th grade, we're not required to take a social study class, but some students may choose to take an elective, and we have multiple electives like psychology and other courses. Math is pretty sequential. Students continue with as they grow and, and build their foundational skills, conceptual algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra two. Once we've completed algebra two, it does open up other options and opportunities to include a course through Carroll Community College dual enrollment, math 121, statistics, trig pre-calc, calculus, but a math course must be taken every single year that we're in school. And just like the social studies, three credits of science, physics, chemistry, and biology, although we may not need to take a science every year we do encourage our students to continue through the sciences and experience science as many of our students do plan to go off to college and know that they must take um, at least the minimal amount of science when they get to college we want our students to be well-rounded that includes fine arts and there are multiple choices there one credit of technology is required um, two classes or one credit of physical education oftentimes that is taken the ninth grade and then one more half credit class uh, later on in, in their high school career. One credit of health, again, half credit of health one, typically in the ninth or 10th, and then a half credit of health two in the 10th or 11th grade. In grade 11 or 12, uh, students are required to take a financial literacy course. That course is a great life skill course. It's required by Carroll County Public Schools. It allows our students to um, understand personal budgeting, finances, um, checking accounts, interest rates, credit cards, things like that. And finally, um, two credits of the same world language or another completer program. And I'm going to circle back to that as a concept, but to understand that students must have a completer program. There are some additional requirements. 
Um, State of Maryland does require that our students meet minimum requirements in English, social studies, science, and math. So at the conclusion of those courses that you see on your screen, student would participate in a state assessment. We are rolling that into a final exam. So that then can be 20% of their final grade as well as meeting the state requirements for that assessment. Additional requirements and students are beginning to amass their service hours, but students must complete a minimum of 75 community service hours by the time they graduate. In fact, we don't want them to wait until the last minute to complete all those hours. So we do have a 55 hour minimum to become a 12th grader. So to move from the 11th and 12th grade, we have to have at least 55 hours underneath our belt. Additionally, um, our students were quick today to figure out that if I take eight credits a year, I can amass 32 credits. And if I only require 25 to graduate, perhaps I could graduate a little bit early. Well, the fine print we did point out, there must be a minimum of four credits in the senior year. And additionally, there must be four years of high school beyond the eighth grade. So there's always the fine print and we shared that uh, with our students. We did discuss what our schedule looks like. Again, the differences between middle school as they are on a seven period day, a seven mod day. Liberty runs on a four mod schedule. And what that means is oftentimes courses may only be running for half a year. So we might, for example, have, let's say, an English class every day for the first half of the year. We might transition maybe to a government class for the second half of the year. But more importantly, that allows our students to kind of drill down and only have to focus in on a limited number of courses. We do have four marking periods similar to the middle school. We're just getting ready to wrap up our second marking period, which is the end of our first semester or our fall semester. Um, the spring semester will be marking periods three and four. Also, our second semester is beginning to start here in about two weeks. Because we only have four classes a day, our classes are a little bit longer, just under an hour and a half, 80 minutes. We also wanted our students to understand that classes can be one credit or they can be half credit. And so when selecting courses that they want to request for next year to be cognizant of the fact that some courses are uh, one credit and some are a half. The half credit courses they would meet every other day for just half a year. The one credit courses, depending on the schedule and the way the schedule lays out, they could meet 90 times. That would be every day for one semester, or they could meet 90 times every other day spread out over the entire year. So um, one credit versus half credit courses. Students are always concerned about how lunch works. And so we talked about how the um, lunch was assigned according to what class they had for third period or third mod. And then again, eight credits per year. Now, to give students a visual and to give you as parents a visual on what a schedule could look like, we mocked up what a potential schedule could look like. So here I am. Um, I'm a ninth grader. And every day, no matter if it's an A day or a B day, at 730, I go straight to my English class. I have an Honors English 9 that meets first mod every day. Second section of the day is, is what we call advisory or pause. We talked about flex and what that means at the middle school and how our flex is called advisory or pause time. And we'll describe what that looks like here in just a little bit. But after that little 30 minute break in between first and second mod, we do go to our second mod class. And in this example, we have conceptual algebra. Third mod is German in this particular example. And at the end of the day, I play trumpet. So I participate in band on the A day. And then at the end of the day, on the B day, I participate in my phys ed graduation requirement. Now, so a year from now, moving into the second semester, marking periods three and four, I would no longer have my English class. I would have government. So at 730 in the morning, I would now report to my government class. I would still have my flex time, my advisory pause time. My math class continues second mod. My third mod becomes a physics class. I continue my year long band because that is a one credit course. And then my PE course has ended. So now I begin my health class. So that could be what a typical schedule might look like. 
and we highlighted the fact that, for example, in the first semester, we might have some academic you know, homework in our English, math, and German classes. Of course, practice our our trumpet or or band or whatever. Um, and then second semester, focusing in on government, continuing with math, and then our physics. A little bit of homework for band and health, but primarily I'm only concentrating on and dealing with three main academic courses per semester. So that does become the advantage of the four mod day. Now, a little bit about our flex time, that little 30 minute block of time. As you can see, Monday, it is designated as an advisory time. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is more typical of what students might be familiar with flex. So let's just take a minute and talk about our advisory program. First and foremost, the students are assigned by grade specifically to an advisor. That advisor is with them for the entire four years while they're at Liberty High School. In fact, many of the advisors end up writing college recommendations for our students as they become seniors and are applying to college because they really get to know them um, over the four years. Um, in terms of what are we doing during this Monday advisory program, it varies by the time of year and by the grade level, but oftentimes some career assessment and some career exploration as we determine, hey, who am I and what direction am I headed in? We are helping our, our students prepare for their mock interview. So they'll be doing that in the 10th grade. And of course, you wouldn't have an interview without having a resume. So we will help our students with that life skill of, of having a resume. And then of course, course planning and, and, and certainly supporting our students. Now on the pause day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's that flex time promoting achievement with the students. And that's, again, that 30 minute block of time. And that's when students might be getting some extra help from teachers, um, an opportunity to maybe um, attend any club meetings. Of course, they can sign up for appointments to meet with their school counselor. Um, and the example that I gave to students is this self advocacy of, hey, I, I had a dentist appointment just the other day and I missed this quiz, can you send for me so that I can make up this assignment and then I don't have to stay after school? So we can kind of take care of this. It's built in during the school day. All right, now moving back to this concept of a completer and a completer being required for graduation, um, I ask our classes that I was with if they remember taking their tour of the Career and Technology Center and everybody raised their hand and could quickly call to mind some of the various programs that they had gone to kind of take a tour of and experience while they're at the Career and Tech Center. And I think the Career and Tech Center kind of highlights um, what a completer could be in terms of a group of classes that the students would take preparing them for, for after high school. And again, a completer can be four, five or six credits worth of courses. And as a quick reminder to our parents, Completers that are available at the Career and Tech Center could range from welding to Homeland Security to cyber security to nursing to engineering to biomedical science, quite a plethora of options that are available to our students. Now, as we as counselors are meeting with our students that are here at Liberty High School, we are busy developing an ACP, an education and career plan. And to highlight what a ECP might look like. Here is an example. Here we have CJ, who is a 12th grader, an ECP, an example of a student that participated in the Career and Tech Center. And in the first column, we're, we're kind of reminded on the graduation requirements, four credits of English, three credits of social studies, and so forth. And as we kind of reflect back on this senior year, what did they do for their middle school and high school years? So we kind of open this up and you can kind of see that We've earned Spanish one credit in the eighth grade, but but CJ decided to switch over and participate in German. You'll also notice that that CJ was very interested in the sciences and doubled down on the science and took not only the conceptual physics, but also the the chemistry as well, in addition to some other graduation requirements like fine arts and band, phys ed and health. In the 10th grade, CJ continued with German enjoyed the band and continue with that, picked up another graduation requirement with technology. 
continued an interest in science, but began to wonder, do I really want to go heavy into the sciences? Do I want to get into to nursing or medical or something really heavy into the sciences? And started to pivot a little bit, made an application to the Career and Tech Center, and started to look maybe in the direction of forensic science, criminal justice. So the Homeland Security, as you'll notice there at the bottom, Foundations of Homeland Security Administration of Justice, two credits taken at the end of 11th grade, in addition to our coursework like anatomy and physiology, wind ensemble, German three, some courses here at Liberty High School. And then finally, culminating in their senior year, finishing the last two classes at the Career and Tech Center, finishing some graduation requirements like health two and financial literacy, enjoying um, their band, their participation, and finishing out their fourth year with band, but also realizing that this student had an opportunity to take a, a course through Carroll Community College and earned not only their English 101 through the community college, but also having it count for their English credit while they're still here. So what began with somebody that was really interested in the sciences kind of pivoted with some interest, uh, and we transitioned to the Career and Tech Center. Um, and this student um, completes two completer programs, the Homeland Security program, as well as the World and Classical Language with two years minimum of a language. So some students may say, but I'm not interested in career in tech. So what do you have to offer at Liberty High School? And so I would say here at Liberty High School, our students can experience business completers. They can experience ag science completers. They can experience, I have an interest in teaching or working with uh, children, an interest in the military with JROTC, graphic arts with interactive media or computer science. All of those are options here at Liberty High School. So once again, just to give you a visual, let me provide you with an example of an ECP. And this is a student, Lamar, who's also a 12th grader. Again, an ECP began here at Liberty, taking a few academic, a few honors classes, phys ed, health, graduation requirements, took Spanish, one with us, was a little unsure of what to do. So um, tried out a principles of business administration and management, found out that they really enjoyed that business management class. And so in the 10th grade, decided to continue with an accounting class, took uh, some graduation requirements, fine arts with an art, exploring computer science to count as their technology, continued with their English, social studies, science and math. And in the 11th grade, I really like that accounting. So we go with accounting too. Managing personal finance with Excel meets the financial literacy requirements, which has also a component uh, that has um, the stock market and using Excel spreadsheets. And this all culminated in the senior year with advanced business management and um, an honors marketing and an, a career internship experience where Lamar left Liberty High School and uh, had an experience at a local business. So a partial school day, leaving the school building and really delving into uh, what it means to, to have that business completer. So all of these opportunities, internships, dual enrollment at the community college, taking classes at the community college that count for, for high school credit and earning college credit, all of those to be eligible for all those opportunities. We have to stay on top of our grades. We have to have good attendance. And of course, we need to be on top of all of our graduation requirements. And so in each of those cases, ninth grade, 10th grade, those students weren't really necessarily planning for that. But as the school counselor met with them year in, year out, each year planning for the following year, we helped them plan ahead. So we were available to keep those options available for us. So students were given access to a Schoology course titled LHS School Counseling Class of 2028. Quite a number of resources were available to them in there. So ask your students to take a peek at that. Our website is updated additionally with scheduling and course selection information on our website. But as students and parents are beginning to plan out courses for um, ninth grade, they need to be aware of the fact that there are levels of courses and each course is associated with a course number. So courses that are designated with terms that you know indicate the level or academic rigor of that course. And it's important to consider the rigor of each course that 
students want to take. Different levels of academic rigor can be selected for different courses, so we can mix and match if we wish. Starting with level one, courses that are basic or foundational help students are still developing some skills in that academic content area, and it does carry a standard weighted grade point average. Academic or level six courses are considered to be instructed on grade level and carry, again, that standard weighted grade point average. Honors or level eight courses are a bit more rigorous than academic level courses, and they carry an additional half a point weighted grade point average. College level courses, level nine courses, can literally be college classes taken through Carroll Community College. It can be advanced placement courses or simply advanced courses, all of which carry additional points above the honors for a weighted grade point average. Many courses have specific terms like academic, honors, AP. It is important to note that some courses do not use these terms to indicate the level of their academic rigor. So, for example, in my my previous slide of Lamar, Advanced Business Management, uh, Accounting 2. These are just a few of the courses at Liberty High School that carry college level weight in a student's grade point average. We pointed out and we talked about what the term alternate means, and we wanted students to be aware that in some cases, a credit or a half credit for some reason or another does not fit in and we ask our students to select something that they'd be willing to take as an alternate um, if something doesn't fill. The first example that, that I kind of bring up is the one credit of, of technology, which could be foundations of technology. And would a student consider taking the exploring computer science as an alternate? Also willing to take that but um, just as a backup in case that first choice does not fill. So we do have a comprehensive school counseling program at Liberty High School, and we're very mindful of when we meet with students and why we meet with the students at the time that we do. Chronologically, we begin in October with a presentation by the Career and Tech Center to our 10th graders. We do this in October because we meet with all of our um, 10th graders in November. We meet with our 10th graders in November because if they wanted to apply to Career in Tech, they would do that in the 10th grade prior to a December 1st deadline. We meet with our 11th graders and discuss their 12th grade plans in December as we kind of map out the last half of 11th grade and all of 12th grade for them. In January, currently, we are meeting with our 9th graders as well as presenting to our 8th graders. We also brought the Career and Tech Center over to do a presentation to our ninth graders just as a quick reminder that this is an option and we'll be back and present to them again the following October for them in the 10th grade. In February, we circle back to our 10th graders who have been accepted to the Career and Tech Center and we make adjustments to their requests. And then administration spends the month of March and April basically building a schedule, determining how many teachers we need, staffing and material requirements. So the question that was first and foremost on our students' minds, and of course yours probably this evening, is how do we select classes? We told our students first to begin with their current level of their academics. We asked them to check their Schoology count, kind of look into the resources there. They'll find under the course selection information quite a number of additional resources. In fact, videos from teachers describing courses so that you can get an idea of what to expect, course descriptions, things like that. But most importantly, we asked them to bring their form home and to not fill it out until they were sitting with you to discuss things with you. We explained that while they were enjoying their winter break, their teachers were spending their winter break um, making recommendations that eighth grade teachers had already met prior to winter break with the high school teachers in their sequence, their course sequence. So they know what to expect at the high school level for each academic level and they were making recommendations based on that knowing the students and so we ask our students to do all of that sit down with their parents and then complete that form and submit it to their homeroom teacher nlt no later than february the 9th the front of the form looks a little bit like this it would have a recommendation from an english society science math if a student were currently taking Spanish, it would indicate that there. So those recommendation levels from the current English or City Science math uh, teachers. There may be a notation for an elective recommendation 
based on discussions between school counselors, teachers, administrators of ORMS and with our staff here at Liberty. There may also be a note directly to the parents regarding um, some parent information. So the question sometimes can be, what if I want to take a different level and that it's not listed on my sheet? That's encouraged. We have our students, you know, speak with your parent or guardian, speak with your teacher, speak with your counselor, but get some feedback on perhaps why that recommendation was what it was, and then take that into consideration. Students can always, parents can always make the selection that they uh, wish to make. The actual course request sheet looks like this, and as you can see in the top right, it says this form is due to the home range teacher on or before February 9th, but they are grouped English, social studies, science, math, um, and students would, parents would tick off the course perhaps that they were recommended or want to take, and then total up each area so that they can help keep track of the, the number of credits that they're requesting. The sheet total must add up to eight credits, and then in addition, we're asking for a one credit alternate and a half credit alternate we'd be willing to take and then just write in the name of that course and then student and parent signs and then submit that to the homeroom teacher. One question uh, that typically comes up with uh, students and with parents is the science. There are three credits that are required, physics, chemistry, and biology taken typically in that order. Some students may wish if they're interested in the sciences and interested maybe in a, in a STEM uh, coursework beyond graduation. They may, may wish to double down like that one example that I gave, and that's fine. We just don't want our students to get through physics, chemistry, and biology, and then not have a science for half of 10th, all of 11th, and all of 12th grade. A quick note about um, the year-long math course. They're highlighted 201316 and 201816. That's conceptual algebra and algebra. It is two credits. Please realize that the way we teach that is that conceptual algebra, which is also known as pre-algebra, we spend about a marking period or so making sure that everybody is up to speed on, on their Math 8 pre-algebra skills. And then we take algebra and we spread it out over second, third, and fourth quarter. So really build a strong foundation for our math skills. And we have find that in the long run, that really is beneficial for our students um, as they progress through their math courses in high school. What are some other things that we should consider uh, when selecting classes? Think about maybe some graduation requirements like PE and health, um, some good coursework, some life skills, um, so that we're not using two fingers to type, that we actually know how to, to do some typing. So that would be a keyboarding class, might be a, a nice choice as a half credit. Um, some other choices to consider. And the example that we had with Lamar, um, and his choice of taking a business class, just to kind of explore and how that kind of grew into um, additional coursework, um, realizing that students must take a fine art. So, you know, what is that going to be? Is it going to be a music? And it's that is either going to be instrumental or vocal, an art class, a dance class, or a drama class. And all of these um, Schoology, program studies, there are descriptions. So if students are wondering what that course is all about, they can do some research on that. It can be difficult to make changes. I tell students changing a class is often like moving concrete. First couple of days within first month or so, you know, not that difficult. We can get in there and change that in the computer. But once March and April gets around and we start building the master schedule over the summer, you know, a student calls and says, change my mind. Oh, I don't want to do Spanish. I want to do German or either that course may be full or it may be very difficult to work into a schedule, if not impossible. So we just ask our students to take some time to choose wisely. We advise them that your form is due on or before February 9th, and that goes to ORMS, to the homeroom teacher. And between the 9th and February 22nd, our staff here at Liberty will be entering that information into the system. And then on February 22nd, school counselors will be attending and coming to the parent-teacher conference night and be available from 3.30 to 6.30 that evening to answer any last minute questions or make any adjustments to any course requests. As always, we'll have our back to school events and tours of Liberty High School. So we will be advertising that. So stay tuned for those opportunities. Just to give you a quick peek on what students can see in their Schoology account. It is a green folder that opens up to course request materials. Program of Studies is a comprehensive program for Carroll County Public Schools. It lists everything in the county. Not everything is offered at Liberty, but it does have descriptions of courses. Some of our teachers have made 
uh, video. So if you wanted to open up, for example, the technology options, you can kind of open up and there's a teacher there kind of describing what those options are here at Liberty High School. Pathways is a good resource. And then back on November 14th, I don't know if um, any parents were able to attend, but um, there's some resources in that folder. So that was our presentation. Thank you so much for joining.